This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design this mountain logo that's filled in with an image of a mountain with a blue sky and clouds and everything like that using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and get started in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons that I designed, I will have a link to that information in the description section of the video. So uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, set up the document to make sure we're all working with a similar view here. So we'll go to File document properties and I'm going to uh, set the display units to px for pixels we're gonna want to turn off the page border make sure that's unchecked just turn that off and we'll go to view we'll want custom selected and then we'll go to zoom zoom in at one to one and we'll open up the align and distribute menu with that button right there and then I'll open up the uh, edit uh, edit colors edit objects colors gradients arrowheads and other fill and stroke properties menu and um, open that up as well I'm just gonna adjust this so I have both panels open at the same time there we go and under the align and distribute panel we're gonna want last selected chosen from that drop down so once we've done that we're all set to uh, get working so the first thing I'm gonna do is create a circle so I'll grab the circles and ellipses tool and I'll hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that and I want to come over here to the fill tab and click on this X over here to the far left to turn off the fill color. Then I'll click on the stroke paint tab and I'll click the blue box to the right of that X to turn on the, the, uh, the stroke. And I'll go to the stroke style tab and from this drop down we're going to want P uh, PX for pixels selected. And I'm going to make the width 50 just to start out with. And for the join I'm going to make that rounded and I'm going to make the cap rounded as well. Then I'll take the opacity bring that down about in half. And then I want to convert this to a path. So I've got a path, object to path, and now we have our circle set. So I'm going to come over to the select tool now, and I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this down a little bit. But actually, before I do that, you're going to want to make sure you have this box turned off over here. If you hover your cursor over it, it's the one on the far left. It says when scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We're going to want that turned off. When we have it turned off, what happens is, no matter how big or small we make this circle, the stroke width stays the same. So if I put it back to how it originally was, you'll see the width is 50 pixels. If I scale it up, and then once I let go, it's gonna put the width of the stroke back to 50 pixels. If I have that turned on, it keeps everything in proportion. It scales the stroke as you scale the image. See how I just scaled that up and it made the stroke with 173 pixels. We don't want that for this tutorial. So I'm gonna make sure that's turned off. And once we've done that, I'm just gonna hold Control and Shift and scale that down a little bit and just put this off to the side for now. And I'm gonna grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool and I'll hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that. And then we'll want to convert that to a path as well. So we'll go to path, object to path. Then I'll grab the uh, select tool. I'm going to click on this again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and take this top right arrow and just rotate this clockwise three steps. So we'll go one, two, three, all while holding the control key. And we let go of it. And there we have that. And I'm going to take this circle now and put this over here. I'm going to take this square, click on that, take this arrow over here to the right and just bring that in a little bit. We're going to want this to fit inside of the uh, circle. And I'm going to duplicate this, uh, this, I guess it's now a diamond shape. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D on the keyboard. And I'll take this one and put this up here like that. And you might want to make this one smaller. So I'll hold control and shift. I'll make this one smaller. If you notice here, I have one mountain bigger than the other. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. And uh, what you want to pay attention to is between these two spaces right here, this little, this little space in between, we want to have some more space in there. So what I'm going to do is I need to make these, uh, these shapes a little thinner. But in, in, I'm going to do that not by using the, uh, the stroke tool. I'm going to use that just by scaling it up a little bit. I'm going to click and drag over all of it and hold Control and Shift and just scale it up a little bit. And that gives us a little more space between those objects. So I'll take this and put this up here. Maybe I'll make this a little bigger, just holding control and shift when you scale. And you may have to adjust this accordingly. It's going to be different for everyone. It may, yours might not look exactly like mine, but something like this is pretty good. Once we've gotten to this point, I'd say we're pretty, we're pretty at a pretty good place. So now we're going to start eliminating certain 
areas of the shapes so that we end up with this sort of shape here in the center. So to do that, I'm going to take the circle and I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'll hold Shift and click on this diamond shape to the left and go to Path, Cut Path, and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And now what you could do is take this bottom piece and just press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And we'll do the same thing to this shape. We'll take the circle, uh, duplicate it by hitting Control D, hold Shift, click on the, uh, the other diamond shape, and go to Path, Cut Path, click off of that to deselect, take this, get rid of that. And we'll do what we're going to do now is we're going to take this mountain over here to the left. We're going to duplicate that by hitting Control D, hold Shift, click on the, uh, the circle, and then go to Path, Cut Path. Click off of that to deselect everything. Now we'll take this shape right here, duplicate that by hitting Control D, hold Shift, click on the circle up here, and go to Path, Cut Path. And then finally, we want to take this mountain to the right, duplicate that one more time by hitting Control D, and then hold Shift and click on this little bottom portion of the circle down here, and go to Path, Cut Path. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. And what you could do now is you could take these two individual pieces out of that shape and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And we now have the circle, the, uh, the mountain shape of the, uh, you know, like the circle. We just got to go ahead and make like these, uh, I guess you can call them sun rays, a little accent for the design here. So to do that, let me just first click and drag over all of this and group it together. Right up here, group selected objects, control G would be the keyboard shortcut. And then I will go to the, um, the Bezier pen, which is over here. Draw Bezier curves, which is uh, uh, B on the keyboard. And I'm just going to go ahead and click. And then hold Control and bring that line straight down about that far. Then click again. And we can let go of Control and hit Enter on the keyboard. And we're going to create a little line. I'm going to change the stroke style. I'm going to change the width of that stroke to the same width that I used for these shapes, which is 50. So we'll just change up to 50 and hit Enter. I'll give that a rounded join and a rounded cap, bring the opacity down a little bit, go back to the select tool. And what I want to do now is duplicate this by hitting control D and then hold control and click and drag this down to the bottom over here like that. And then we could hold shift and click on the other one and we want to group them together, group selected objects then hold shift and click on our little mountain logo in the center and make sure we center it up on the vertical and horizontal axis like that. Now we can click off of it to deselect everything. We can now click on just this grouping of shapes right here and then click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control and grab this arrow and rotate it around like this. And if you notice, it kind of rotates in a, in a circle going around the circle. So um, going around the, uh, the mountain logo. So I'm going to bring it back to the starting point right here. And while holding control on the left, uh, the left mouse click, I'm going to press the space bar. And that's going to put a, a, a copy of it there. So I'll rotate this around, put another copy of this right here, rotate it around here, put another copy there, and then back over here, put, in a, put a copy of it right here. But instead of pressing space bar, we can just let go of everything and leave it right there. So we have it going at, uh, at 12 o'clock, at 3 o'clock, sort of like um, if you're going in a clock fashion, this would be 12, this would be 3, 6, and 9. So. Um, we're going to put smaller shapes going on the inside between the rest of those. So to do that, I'm going to click on this first grouping right here. I'm going to duplicate them by hitting Control D. And I'm going to ungroup them and click off of it to deselect everything. Take this bottom one and just delete that. And press Delete on the keyboard. Take this top one, go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool. And I'm going to hold Control and take this node and just bring that down like that. Maybe about that far. Maybe I'll bring that down a little further. I'm going to zoom in so I can see it better. If you want to zoom in and out, just hold control and roll up and down the mouse wheel. And we'll go back to the select tool. We want to click on this first grouping right here and ungroup them. Go ahead and click the ungroup button. Then take this smaller object and duplicate that by hitting control D. Hold shift, click on this object down here and click, uh, click on the button down here in the align panel that says align to top edges. I'm just going to put it down there like that. And what we could do now is click on this smaller object, then hold shift, click on that smaller object, group them together, 
click on it again to get the rotation handles. And again, we're going to hold control and rotate it around. And we're just going to press space bar to put copies at the sections running between the, uh, the larger segments right there, just like that. And once we've done that, we can click and drag over everything and just ungroup it all. Click off of it to deselect everything. And you could just take these individual shapes, everything below these two, these two big ones down here. You just go ahead and delete them all. And again, to delete them, I'm just pressing on it, clicking on it and pressing delete on the keyboard. And we now have our mountain logo. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna group, uh, not group, click and drag over all of this and group it together. And then I'll duplicate it by hitting Control D, just so we have another copy to work with in case we want, because it's gonna be good to have another copy if you wanna make this thing, if you wanna make the lines thinner, you can scale it up like that, and it'll make the lines thinner. If you wanna make them thicker, you could scale it down and make them thicker like that. So it's good to have a duplicate copy of that handy in case you need it. But I'm gonna take this extra copy over here, and I'm gonna ungroup it. And I'm gonna convert all of these to a path. So I'll go to Path, Stroke to Path. And then I'm going to unify it all together by going to Path Union. And that's going to finalize the thickness of everything. It's going to stay the same thickness no matter what size you make it. So, um, so the final step would be to place our mountain image within the logo. And the image I will be using, I will have a link to that in the description section of the video. So just go ahead and download that and just click and drag it into Inkscape. It's going to ask if you want to embed it or link it. The difference between the two is when you embed it, it, it takes the image and creates it. Well, not creates it it, it. it places a copy of the image within Inkscape. When you link it, it just takes a mirror image of it from wherever it's saved on your hard drive. So if you use link and you delete it from your hard drive, the next time you go to open up Inkscape, the image won't, won't appear. But with embed, you could actually embed it into the image, into the Inkscape file, and then you can go and delete it from your hard drive and it will remain in Inkscape. So what I'll do now is I'll take the image and just lower it to the bottom so it goes beneath the logo. And I'm just going to hold control and shift and scale this down. And I want to place, you know what, I'm going to click on the logo and make that red so we can see it better up against the, uh, the image here. And I want to place the image so that the red area is intersecting with some of the mountains and some of the sky as well as if you notice what I did here in the thumbnail, I got some of the, I actually got some of the green down here as well and then more of the mountains and then more of the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position this right, maybe right here. And then once I've done that, I'll hold shift and click on the logo and go to object, clip, set. And we can press one on the keyboard to zoom out to 100% to see how that looks. Now I think that looks pretty good right there. I'm gonna leave that as it is. But in case you don't like how yours came out, you could just go to object, clip, release, and then try again. You can click off of it to deselect everything and move it around some more and see, uh, you know, what position you like. But like I said, I like mine. I like how this one came out right here. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can create a mountain logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.